Hey, welcome back. I bet when you've wanted to add some sort of feature that pops or bounces on your screen and you ask questions, people always say, hey, go to CodePen, which is great if you knew what CodePen was. Well, it's on the screen right now. It's an area where coders around the world, really talented, amazing, magical people, spend time creating codes that allow you to do stuff that you probably didn't even realize you could do. Well, to be honest, everything is code driven at the end of the day. So everything is possible in a way. But CodePen basically gives you the code for you to apply that to your website. Now, if you're using Elementor, it's quite easy to get the code, dump it in and then sit there going, it's not doing anything. Because often what you get given is a bit of HTML, a bit of CSS and sometimes a bit of JavaScript as well. And you might think, well, HTML, we use the HTML widget. CSS will use the custom CSS and by the JavaScript, we'll dump it into code snippets. That's not actually how you need to be applying it if you want to be using some code from CodePen to Elementor. I'm going to show you how you do that. And we're going to use a unique bespoke button as well so we can see how we can hyperlink that to other pages as well. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so the CodePen website, codepen.io, you know, once you've registered or you go search and, and there is so much stuff on here you can find, but I'm not focusing on just CodePen. I'm focusing on how do we take a bit of code and add it to our Elementor website because it's, it's actually easier than you think, okay? Now, a website I will be linking is cssbuttons.io. This website is amazing. It is super brilliant. I mean, look at these buttons. You've got a wavy, like a moving animated button. You've got a bit of animation over here. You've got like look, a bit of a glitchy effect over here. Um, shop now, you know, I mean, look, look at this. Look, there are so many lovely little buttons here that you could easily apply to your website just to be a little bit different. Now it is dead easy when you go to any one of these buttons. These are all free, by the way. Okay. For you to see this bit here, CSS and HTML, and you go, yeah, easy. I just drop that into my website, into the advanced or custom CSS. Job done, we're done. No, it's actually a little bit more than that. And when I say more, it's actually less than that, but it's more than that. Look, let me show you what I mean. We're just gonna go over to a blank page and what you need to do is drop in a HTML widget, okay? Everything is done within this widget, okay? So you will do your CSS, the HTML, and if there was JavaScript, you would do that in here as well. Now, there are a few things you must bear in mind. HTML, you just paste as it is. Any CSS code, you don't just paste it. You've got to ensure you've put the word style and then closed off the style as well. And the code goes in the middle. If you are adding any JavaScript, script, add the code and then close off the script. If you just dump it in, it's not gonna work, okay? It just won't do anything. We're just gonna pick up this HTML as it is. I dump the code in, we just get a button and it's not actually doing anything. It's just a black button. Looks quite boring because we haven't added in the CSS yet. So let me just hit return a few times there and let's get the CSS code. Just copy it. You can even hit just copy all by the way. Uh, it's up to you. And I'm just gonna type style. Remember style for CSS. It gives you the closing bracket, paste it in, we now have our button. Now, don't sit there thinking, oh, I don't like the colors, or be worried because you no longer are within the button widget where you had style and typography and all of that. Now you're in HTML. And other than the advanced tab, you're kind of a little bit reduced as to what you can do, but you are within HTML. So where it says button, let me hit return a few times. Where it says button, I'm gonna change this to say, click me. It's all in uppercase. Slight problem is now it's kind of gone a little bit too far to the right because this at the moment is set to be a width of 200 pixels. Let's increase it to 230. There you go, that's a little bit better. In fact, I'm gonna reduce the padding to be about 20 on the left and right. So now I'm, I can maybe decrease this to be uh, 200 and that looks okay. I could change the top to be 10 pixel. So the button is now a little bit narrower. I quite liked it just being that big because we got to see the color change. Here's the clever, clever bit, okay? At the minute we have a blue and black, okay? We're gonna create, we're gonna turn this into a, um, a HTML, not HTML, a URL button, okay? So when you click it, it takes you somewhere. Because at the moment you click it, it's not gonna do anything. Um, down here, we're now gonna start to say, well, what is the color we have? What is the color before you do anything? 
And I'm going to go with uh, just down here. So I'm going to go with FF000. So we have red. OK, the color afterwards, I'm going to leave that to be. Uh, no, we're going to leave that as that dark, slight color there. And I'm going to go down to the liquid color afterwards. I, I'm not a fan of RGBA colors, I have to be honest. So I'm going to change this one to be 000 like that. OK. So, you know, you can play around with it and have whatever effect you want to have going on there. You play around with the colors. It's fine with hashtag, OK, uh, with the hex codes. You can do that all day long. All right. I actually prefer that, to be honest. So I'm actually going to do it over here as well. I'm going to change this to be hashtag FFFFFF like that. And then we get a bit of a white effect going on there as well. So, you know, you can add in a bit of a um, you can add in basically whatever you want. Um, in fact, I'm going to change that to be D0, D0, CE. I hope that makes sense what I'm doing there. OK, just added a bit of a, a separate effect going on there. OK, so you get a bit of a, a nice little woo, wavy effect. And this is all being done within the code. So if you want to experiment and play around with that, you can. But here's the really clever bit. At the moment, this button does nothing. We have span, click me, uh, closer span. And then we have diff class, which is just a class, which is liquid, which is all being picked up from down here as well with the liquid bit. OK, with how it works and flows. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to now add in some um, like the ahref uh, syntax for it to link to another page. I'm just going to hit return a few times and we're now going to replace the click me with this bit of code. OK, so all we're touching the click me bit. Now I've replaced click me. Well, click me is still there, but it now sits within the syntax uh, so that we can add like a href, you know, a reference. Hey, um, so it's now going to take us to our one of our websites. OK. And so it's a href, you put the link in and then the, what the name will be. And obviously this will be a link to wherever you want it to go. It could even go to a menu anchor. You know, you just make sure you put correctly over here, the, you know, the forward slash and the uh, hashtag and whatever is the menu anchor name. So you can do all of that. OK, now then here's the bit where you got to pay a bit of attention. So I've just added in this little bit of extra code over here. So style apostrophe. Color FFF, font family railway, text transform per case, uh, font size 20. I could I could drop this down to be uh, maybe look, I could I could make it ridiculously there. I'll just go for 20 for now. Okay, I'm not messing around too much with the sizing or anything like that. Um, I've put railway instead of orbitron in anyway, I and mean, then I've closed off the apostrophe. So style equals apostrophe, put your stuff in, make sure you put the semicolon at the end of each one, and then put the apostrophe. That's great. That is now going to be a hyperlink to Web Squadron with our uh, wording inside of there. However, I don't want it to open in the same window. I want it to take you to a new window. So I'm just going to drop in one final bit of code right here, which is called target blank. OK, so that is going to actually open it in a new window. So let's test this out. Let's do update and let us preview this. So there we go. We have our button. I mean, look at that. It's just it's just animated and it looks pretty, pretty cool. I like that. I mean, you click it and it opens it in a new window. And look, if I close that, I didn't click back. OK, I mean, I am in a new window. I'm just using um, control W to close the screen down. But that is a new window. And that is a really, really simple way of just taking some code from CodePen or anywhere where you get some CSS, HTML, even JavaScript. You just dump it into HTML. And you can have now a bit of a, a nicer looking, snazzier bit of a button. And look, just to make the point, in case you don't believe me, let's go back over here. Let's pick a totally different button. Let's go for, let's go for this one over here. Let's just pick up the HTML, pick, pick it up. Let's just dump it in there. We just have a standard button that's not doing anything fabulous. Let's just pick up this code over here. Let's just dump the code there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, remember style. Dull. That that's a way of knowing you ain't done it right when the code just appears like that. You've missed out the style. And now, obviously, you can mess around with the color schemes and everything you got here. But look, this is dead dead simple to do. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow, and feel a little bit more confident now with adding in some code pen code into your Elementor website. Have fun. I'll see you soon.